welcome back to Spellbound Weaving and Dyeing. Today I thought I would do something that I haven't done before. I was thinking about what I would do for my next video and I thought, wow, I don't think I've ever dyed a rainbow. <laughs> it's something that I think I've always wanted to do. My daughter loves them and I just thought I've never done this. So that is what we're going to be doing today with this yarn. So. In this video, I got everything set up before I started, but I'll talk you through what fibers we have here and what colors we will be dyeing with. So, on our record keeping book here, you can see the colors that I have chosen to use today. So, on the top here, we have fuchsia red, deep orange, golden yellow, granny apple, turquoise, which requires twice the amount of dye, and red violet. Now there are a few colors here that do contain um, the turquoise color from Dharma, which require heat to help them process to their true color. So I like to mix all of my colors up with like a hot water. Um, and then today I'm thinking, cause it is quite cool in Canberra at the moment, I might pop this yarn into the oven um, just at the end to give it a hit of heat to finish the development. So you can see the colors we have here. Now every single color except for our turquoise, I mixed up 120 mils of color and each of those colors except for the turquoise, I used one teaspoon of dye. For the turquoise, I used two teaspoons of dye for the same amount of water, so twice as much dye. Okay. Now, the yarn that we are dyeing today, we've got two different types of yarn today, like we did in the last episode. I just wanted to show you um, how they take the color differently, how they look when they're all finished and dry as well. So in the front here, we have something that's really fun. It's a Supima cotton, which is a very sort of sleek, um, has a nice twist to it. It's not too fluffy. It's a very strong cotton as well. And it has sparkles in it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a lot of sparkles throughout that. You'll be able to see it at the end when I do the close-ups of it all dry. Um, and in the front here, we have some ring spun cotton, which is a really nice fluffy cotton. It's one of my favorites to work with. Um, but you can see that there is quite a stark color difference between the two of them. So it will be interesting to see how they look once they are completely dyed. Now each of these skeins here is 100 grams and I'm going to dye them from the red side of our rainbow all the way through to our purple side so that um, when the skein is opened up you will have um, red and then it'll be like orange, orange, yellow, yellow. So I'll show you once it's all dry as well and I'm hoping to get a few of these um, tutorial videos some of the yarn i'm hoping to to weave up little samples of them as well so you can sort of see how they look when they are on the loom so today for our tutorial i've got our yarn we've got our plastic and our tarp to protect the table we've got our apron on and we also have our dyes mixed up in our little squirty bottles i've labeled them i go through all of this in some of the previous videos but i thought i'll mix everything up first so we have our six colors today of our rainbow. I haven't mixed up a lot of dye, but I'd rather need to mix up more than have too much left over. I have got my little metal bowls. I've got three of these, so I will um, wash them as I work my way along for my new colors. And I have my foam brushes to help me work that color through to the, to the other side of the yarn. So let's go. So I'm going to be starting on the left side, my left side of the yarn with our first color, which is our fuchsia red. Now, I'm going to have some paper towel handy just to clean up some spills if I need to. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm taking the lid off this and I'm squirting it into my bowl. Just gives me more control. It sort of helps me to keep the dye from squirting onto the yarn where I don't want it to go. Okay, so we've got six colors. So we can probably fit one, two, three, four, five, six. So we don't want to do too much of each color. We will have a space between each of those colors where the colors overlap a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to get started. So I think one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think about the width of my foam brush is probably um, as wide as I want to go with this color. Now don't forget when your yarn is wet, the color will wick through the yarn and spread a little bit beyond where you put it. So it's important that if you want it to go a little bit, um, you don't want it to go too far. 
start it a little bit further back. That way you can see how much that dye is going to travel through your wet yarn um, and you won't end up like overshooting where it goes. So just sort of making a line and then working my way back onto my yarn. Now it might look like you are getting it quite saturated on this side, but don't forget that at the end we are going to flip our yarn over um, and make sure that we've saturated completely through to the other side because there's nothing worse than thinking that's perfect, I love it, it looks great and then you know turning it over or rinsing it out or wrapping it up and realizing oh I've got big white spots on the other side of my yarn. So I'm wondering if you can see those sparkles now that I've added the red dye to this they are like oh just like so so sparkly but look you can see that there is a big chunk where we haven't gone all the way through. So what I like to do when I am dyeing um, is I don't like to, I like to try and save a little bit of my dye. So get it as saturated from this side as you can, but leave a little bit in your bottle. That's sort of like your, your, um, your safety dye. <laughs> so that's the dye that you know you've got on hand for when you flip it over, otherwise you'll be mixing up more than you need. I find that these brushes really just help to get that dye through the yarn as much as we can. And don't forget that on the ends, it will be a little bit harder to work that dye all the way through because we have such bulky ends of our yarn. So don't forget, you can wear gloves when you're doing this. There's no reason for you, that you don't have to wear them. But I find it just washes off, I don't really mind. I just don't really like to wear them to be honest. Okay. Alright, so we're going to move on to our next colour. Now you can see there's a little bit of a lighter line here. So we placed the dye about here and it sort of spreads through a little bit. Um, which we don't mind. I'm not too fussed about that because we're going to be blending our colour through as we add the next colour. Okay. So you will have quite a long section of your red when you do weave or knit with your yarn because once we spread out our skein, don't forget it's in a big circle, you will have quite a large red section with two smaller orange sections on the side on each side of the red and then two small yellow two small and then you'll end up with quite a large purple end so have a play around with the placement if that doesn't sound like um, what you're after the next color I'm using is my deep orange these are all Dharma colors today putting my deep orange into my bowl saving a bit for after and I'm just using the same brush I'm not bothering to wash it because we're blending those colours in anyway. So just dabbing back along that line. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to do roughly a brush worth of our orange. It's such a like gloomy day today in Canberra. It's a bit cloudy. There's not really much sun. So doing a nice bright <laughs> rainbow to brighten up the day. As you can see as we move that, you can see those little white pops through there, but don't worry. We are going to flip our yarn over after we completely dyed this side. I like to just flip it all at once. That saves you from having to flip it, flip it back, flip it, flip it back. Helps to sort of keep your yarn laid out the way that you want it. Plus, the more that you play around with wet yarn, <laughs> the higher chance you sort of have at it getting tangled. So I like to just leave it alone as much as possible. see we do have a lot of white through um, the other side of this but we will try and 
um, completely saturate the other side once we turn our yarn over. Okay, not too worried about that. Okay. Next is our golden yellow. Now this is a little bit of like a warmer yellow, I think, um, compared to say the bright yellow that we used in the last dyeing tutorial. The bright yellow that we used was more of like a, I guess like a clean yellow, more of like a citrusy sort of yellow, whereas I think, yeah, this is a bit more of a golden yellow. Just laying out my outline there. The fun thing about rainbows as well, and this is something that I had fun playing around with when I was choosing my colours, was that sure, you know, you think of a rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. But how many reds are out there out there? How many, you know, purples? How many greens? How many blues? So this was really fun to pick the colours that I wanted to use and to think about how they would all look together, how they would look rinsed and dry. Um, yeah, so you, like you could probably dye only rainbows and you'd still be able to come up with new colorways all the time, which is really fun. I love that about color and you could mix. Yeah, you could mix your own colors, you could play around, you could use do a rainbow using only the primary colors. Um, and just have so much fun with it. Now this yarn is really sucking up that dye because what I did was I squeezed a lot of that soda ash out. I tend to try and squeeze my a lot of my soda ash water out when I am wanting to get quite a bright saturated colour. Okay. You can see we're about halfway through our skeins with three more colors to go. So that's perfect. The next color we're moving on to is our green. This is called Granny Apple. It's quite a bright green, like a citrusy green, I guess you could say. <laughs> now, if you are worried about running out of color, but you don't want to mix up too much, I will put in the comments a little sort of cheat guide to, um, to mixing up your colors. It might seem intimidating to start with, but when you realize that you can just literally like halve the amount and then halve it again and then halve it again, you know, that was something that I felt quite um, intimidated by when I first started because maths is not my strong suit, I will admit. I'm sure I'm not the only one out there, but um, yeah, so I felt a little bit, you know, nervous about, oh, well, I, I didn't want to mix up a, an entire bottle, but... Um, you know, I knew I needed more dye. So, for example, we used one teaspoon for 120 mils. If you don't want to make that entire amount of dye, you could just halve it. So do um, half a teaspoon to 60 mils. If that still seems like too much, halve it again. So you could do a quarter of a teaspoon of dye to 30 mils of water. And that is something that you can easily measure with, you know, like a measuring jug or some kitchen scales as well. So. Um, don't be intimidated by it and it sort of gives you a lot of control and then a lot of confidence in knowing that okay well if I run out it's no big deal I'll just I'll just um, mix up some more that's why it's important to also write down the amounts of what you mix up so that you know the strength that you need to mix up some more so we're just mixing our green and our yellow now these are probably the biggest contrasted colors so far but I'm just gently blending them not too much but we don't want any white spaces in there. That green is so fun and bright. I was going to use Chartreuse, which is a really gorgeous green, but it's a very, very sort of yellow toned green. And I didn't think it would be green enough. I thought it might be too yellow next to that golden yellow or that bright yellow that we used. What did we use? Golden yellow. Okay. So, moving on now to our blue. We've only got two more colours and then what we're going to do is go back and work that dye through the rest of our yarn. I've just rinsed my brush and squeezed out as much water as I can and you can see that brush is just sucking up that dye. It holds quite a lot of dye. And then we're going to do some blue. Now this is our turquoise. 
Now this is the colour that we mixed up at double the strength. So it is a very sort of saturated bright blue. And you can see even right now it's just so bright, that blue, it's beautiful. One thing that I will say is if you are using this method of painting with the foam brushes, just be wary if you do then translate this sort of technique to dyeing wool or other sort of animal fibers such as wool because you don't want to felt the yarn by rubbing and dabbing and using too much agitation, especially if you do have um, your dye mixed up with oh, like a hot water because heat and agitation will felt wool. that blue and that green are, are, are mixing and striking together they're creating this really gorgeous mermaidy teal color it's just really beautiful hopefully we'll see that once it batches and we rinse it out okay now I'm purposely not completely saturating this yarn because I want to save us some dye for when I turn it over um, and then I can go back through to the other side. So the last color that we're using now is our red violet. So this is a really nice purple. It's like a very red based purple. You can also buy blue violet, which is a lot more blue based obviously. But I find that the red violets, the blue violet used to be my favorite, but because it is mixed with that turquoise base color, um, you do need that heat to be able to set it properly. Okay, look at that color. Oh, it's so pretty. I think we used this color in our speckling tutorial. It is, like I said, it's one of my favorite, one of my favorites. I definitely have a soft spot for sort of cool based colors and sort of, I guess, like this sort of end of the spectrum. Definitely more so than say oranges and yellows. I, I love my purples, my pinks, my blues and sort of those bluey greens, I think might be some of my favorite colors. That has just absolutely sucked up that purple like nothing else. It's crazy. That yarn has just sucked up that color. A little bit more for this side and then we will flip our yarn over. So we still need to put a little bit more purple on that, but I'm going to wait till I flip it over. So taking my paper towel and just sort of cleaning up as much mess around that yarn as I can. It just keeps everything nice and neat and tidy, especially if you're flipping your yarn. A good habit to get into so you don't end up with lots of dye left on your plastic as you flip and then it in there not quite where you want it to go so I'm going to start at the top and all I'm doing is flipping it so that the purple and the red stay where they are so I'm not turning it around I'm literally just picking it up and flipping it just like that perfect you can see we have a lot of white space left so we're going to go back through with all six of our colors and try and get it as saturated as possible. Just lining it back up to where it was, trying to keep those transitions completely in line with each other. Okay. All right, so we'll start back with our purple. And I'm using the rest of the dye. Remember I left about half of each color so that I could go back through and completely saturate them again. Okay, so back with our purple. Just trying to keep those transitions as nice and neat as they were on the other side. Nice and consistent. That's 
Supima cotton is just beautiful with the sparkles through it. It's really taking the colour in the most amazing way. Just beautiful. And especially working with the darker colours on that Sparkle Supima, it really just makes those sparkles shine like nothing else. I dyed some, um, some Sparkle Silk once and I dyed it black. And oh my goodness, the sparkles were just like, wow, wow, it stood out so much. It was really cool. Okay. So we'll go and have a little look, make sure that's gone all the way through. It's looking pretty good. You've got to be extra careful, especially on these ends, because there is so much yarn there. It might look like it's quite saturated, but you sort of want to work it through a little bit just to make sure that... So you can sort of see it hasn't quite taken on those ends. Let's mushing it through. Mushing, mashing. <laughs> and through. Yeah, so those ends, you've just got to be so careful. And really make sure. And don't forget that when you are sort of dyeing weft in skeins like this, you do have your choke ties in there as well. So you want to make sure that you're really working that dye through because it might seem like you've gotten it completely saturated, but those choke ties can sometimes work as like a little bit of a resist and the yarn can not get all the way underneath, which you don't want. See, just like that. You can see we've got some lighter sections through there, so I'm just taking my extra dye and really working that into those ends. looking pretty good. Alright, so that's our purple, I think, done. The next colour that I'm going to go back through with is our blue. So I'm going to rinse my brush um, and I'm going to start back on that blue. When I use my brush, I sort of just move the yarn a little bit to sort of separate that skein as I go. This just helps me to make sure it's really worked all the way through and checking for white spots at the same time.
There are a couple of spots there with the yellow where I think the brush had picked up too much of the green on the corner and has sort of transferred it through to the yellow. So hopefully they're on a spot where the yellow struck sort of, you know, early enough and long enough ago that it doesn't pick up too much of that green. So I'm not too worried, like this little section here, but I think because we dyed it already um, earlier, that it won't sort of pick up too much and it won't sort of stain it too much. It will still have the, um, most of that dye from earlier. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to let it batch. Hmm. It's almost four o'clock, so I'll probably rinse this tonight. I do want those colors as saturated as possible, so I'll probably batch it uh, for about four or five hours, and I will also put it in the oven at 50 degrees Celsius for an hour before I rinse it, and I'll let it cool completely before I rinse it out. So. Um, I can't wait to show you what this looks like when it is rinsed and dry. So here we have our yarn that is completely rinsed and dry. So you can see the skeins at the front here are the ones that had that sparkle in the Supima um, and they really just sort of pick up the sunlight in a subtle way. They're not too in your face but you can definitely still see that sparkle. I'm really pleased with just how bright these colours turned out in the end. I'm absolutely so happy. Um, I think my favourite thing might be the little transitions and the blending of the colours together, for example, where the blue and the green meet. Um, I actually really like where the green and the yellow meet. Um, as well as the blue and the purple. So all in all, I'm really, really, really happy with how this has turned out and I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to hear in the comments below if you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I'd also love to hear if you have any ideas about things that you would like to see, um, any yarns you'd like to see me dye, any colours or you know styles that you'd like to see me dye as well would be really great. 
And if dyeing's not quite up your alley or you're not quite ready to tackle it yet, I'm now offering my hand dyed yarn for sale in my online Etsy store, Spellbound Weaving. I'll pop the link for that below. Thanks very much.